Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMI365. Today's episode, I'm going to be covering some key updates from Microsoft around new commerce experience. These are heavy updates that came in the past few weeks here that I feel like are really relevant because they changed the game from an operational perspective. So I just want to give a little bit more context there for you, just so you have all the key knowledge and information to move forward. First update that I'm going to be talking about today in terminology is called coterminosity. So this is something that's going to greatly reduce operational overhead, at least at a per customer level here. So prior to coterminosity, when you take, think about a customer that you manage today and moving them into new commerce subscriptions, you have this concept here where you might have them being uh, purchasing M365 business standard, and you'll say that purchase day for new commerce is 3, 10, 22, but then their renewal date here is going to be three, ten, twenty-three, because they're on an annual subscription or an annual commitment here for this particular subscription, and you move them to that just because there's some of that financial relief in that. This is twenty percent cheaper over the monthlies for that particular subscription. Now the problem before coterminosity here is let's say that customer now wants to purchase Intune later down the line and let's say that purchase date is 6-12-22. The big problem here now is that renewal date is disparate at this customer level, meaning that it's 6-12-23 and again this is an annual commitment here. So we have these two different renewal dates for this customer, even though you know we're managing them and we have to operationally now handle this type of complexity. This can span across the add-ons, and that was a really big problem as well too, because add-ons are a big deal that they need to, to co-terminate, because what if you get stuck with an add-on and the base plan is something that they cancel at a certain period of time. It puts you in a weird situation. So with co-terminosity here, What's changing here is that your renewal date for this particular subscription is 3.10.23 and this becomes your base level renewal date because you purchased this one first. So this next date here is actually also going to be 3.10.23 for the renewal and essentially here this is going to get prorated at your time of purchase meaning that this will be prorated and your financial liability will only be from 612 up until 310 as far as the subscription goes. So this obviously makes logical sense for them to do this um, and have these lined up. They're still lined up at whatever date you purchase the first initial base on, but even if you look at a subscription that might be a monthly commitment, let's say you have you know XYZ subscription and it's monthly and you purchase it on 7, 14, 22. The big thing here is that this also co-terminates even though it's monthly. So your next renewal date for this one is actually going to be on 8, 10, 22. Just because it's a monthly subscription. So the next month here, it flows up with this date. So everything lines up on a daily or on the date basis here, and you have this moving forward so that Ultimately, you can at least line things up from that subscription perspective, and ultimately, you'll get to this point where it lines up with the 310 date as well, too, if you were to cancel all the subscriptions on the same date from a commitment term perspective. So all this is really great. Um, you know, it reduces operational complexity. As far as some asterisks go here, this is still just per customer, meaning we can't have one renewal date across all of our customers that we have under management. And that kind of makes sense just based off of the way things are provisioned within these tenants. The next one I want to talk about here is the cancellation policy. And so with this one here, this is huge, this came out last week. We're moving from 72 hour window for cancellation decrement into seven calendar days. 
So your same rules still apply here, meaning that you have a prorated refund. Or that the subscription itself is prorated based off the time in which you cancel the subscription. Meaning that if you're three days into your seven day renewal window, you'll be charged for those first three days if it's an annual commit or a monthly commit, but then you'll get the relief for the remainder of the, the subscription term as well too. The other key piece here with the cancellation policy is that it applies to obviously cancellations, but also to decrements. And also to increment reversals. Meaning that obviously cancels are straightforward. Decrements, you can also move decrements as far as moving the seats down um, at the renewal date in that seven day window. It's again the prorated refund depending on when you decrement those seat counts off of the renewal date. And then increment reversal is basically just saying that on the renewal, I increment by 50 seats and I had to figure out or decide that I don't actually need those 50 seats. So I move it down to 40. I can do that all within the seven calendar day window versus the strict 72 hours. That was 365 days a year, no relief for weekends, holidays, anything like that. That still applies here, but obviously you have seven days. So it's, it's a lot more flexibility there from the restrictions that you have. The main thing after that seven day window, uh, again, you won't be able to cancel or decrement seats. So you're kind of locked in financially from that standpoint. So all those rules uh, still apply, but ultimately this is just giving us a lot more flexibility here. So those are two major announcements that I wanted to just walk through here just because they change a lot uh, for you here today as far as how you may have established our pro processes already within your organization to accommodate for these restrictions as well as potentially needing to amend some of the contracts that you have with your customers and you've established already just because there's new rules to this game as well too. So essentially, uh, great announcements, honestly, just based off of um, the newer flexibility we have. Would have liked to have those uh, at the beginning, um, but here I think that it will keep evolving over time and hopefully get a little bit more flexible for us, um, much like the CSP program used to be as well too. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.